hello, Crafty Crandall here. Today I have kind of a low-key chill video for you. I'm going to be going through my sketchbook collection with you. Now, by sketchbook, I don't mean like a pad of paper. Um, I've got a bunch of like pads of paper that I will use for my pieces that are not what I would consider to be a sketchbook. I tear the pieces out of here and then I put them in a portfolio for finished pieces once they're done. By sketchbook, I mean a bound book that I intend to keep the work that I create within the confines of the book. I have a wide variety of sketchbooks to cover today, ranging from small to large, and also from different types of covers, hardcover, softcover, different bindings, and also, of course, different paper types. So drawing paper, mixed media paper, watercolor paper, hot press paper, etc. So without any further ado, let's check out my sketchbook collection, shall we? So I thought about how to organize this video and I figured that I would go through my general purpose sketchbooks first, as I feel like that will be more applicable to more viewers. And then I will go through my more painter friendly sketchbooks, which is a medium that I really like and that I prefer, but I know that not all of my viewers are watercolorists. Some of you might just be general artists, you might be interested in drawing, etc. So I wanted to cover the more applicable range first and then jump into the painting range. I will try to leave links to everything down below as well as I can, and I will also try to timestamp out where the different sections start so you can jump into the sketchbooks that you're more interested in seeing if you don't care to see my entire sketchbook collection. So the first couple of sketchbooks that I have here are actually sketchbooks that I've not yet used and I wanted to cover them first because for the rest of them I plan on going through a couple of like the pieces that are done in each of the sketchbooks but these two are sketchbooks that I have not used and they are both by the same brand. So I have here two different Piccadilly sketchbooks, um, Piccadilly I believe being the brand, and they are both just drawing sketchbooks. They are bound differently so this small black one says sketch on it. It has general purpose like sketching paper, probably about 90 pounds if I were to guess, but I will try to leave all the information down below in the uh, description. The second one here is a top wire bound sketchbook. I really like this sketchbook for uh, the fact that, you know, it can easily flip over. This paper in this book is thinner than the other one uh, and it is more white, whereas this is more of an off-white paper. Uh, hopefully one day I will get to using these. I don't do a ton of just strictly sketching, so that's why these haven't been used yet, but at some point hopefully they will be. The next two that I have here are just Canson soft cover drawing sketchbooks. I love these sketchbooks so much. First of all, I love them because the covers of them are kind of like a cardstock cardboard type material and they can be very easily customized. So on this one, I just put a Blue October sticker, uh, which is my favorite band. I'm actually wearing a Blue October shirt right now. <laughs> uh, and then I also have here my old Inktober sketchbook, which I have shown in a video. I will try to link that up above in the cards if you're interested in seeing the full tour of this sketchbook. Uh, but this is the type of sketchbook that I used for this. Now, I know when I did that video, I don't believe I was able to find the link to this exact sketchbook so I will do my best to do that but I do know that I got these at Hobby Lobby and so you might be able to find them there or a Michaels or something like that. The next two sketchbooks are extremely similar to those in that they are kind of soft cover more flimsy drawing sketchbooks. Uh, what is different about these is that the covers are kind of more of a like vinyl type material and so they're not as easily customized uh, but they are more rugged so like if you're throwing this in a bag it'll probably hold up better than the Canson version. Uh, I'm not 100% positive who like what brand these are but again I found them at Hobby Lobby. Uh, I found them because I was trying to find the Canson ones again and these were all they had so I picked them up. I've used them, I like them and uh, I hope to continue to use these. These are really great for travel. I use them a lot when I go on trips because they're really easy to fit in your luggage and then you have something to draw on while you're on vacation. This next sketchbook was really interesting. So I found this I think at Target and it's not really intended to be a sketchbook I don't think. It's more so intended to be like a journal or um, just like a notebook that you write in. So this is the Hallmark 
uh, Hallmark branded journal and I really just loved the cover of it. It has a magnetic closure here that I really like. I think that that is kind of a fun little touch. And the paper in here isn't bad for sketching. It lays very flat and it's got like the three um, bindings like you'd see in any normal sketchbook. So really a nice find. Uh, if you can find one, I will try to leave a link again down below. This next sketchbook is the Hannibal sketchbook that Jazza put in his uh, Jazza's Artie Art Box when I got that. And so um, it is a hardcover sketchbook this time uh, and it is just a really nice drawing sketching uh, paper. It is pretty heavy weight. It's probably closer to like 140 pounds and it's great for just like mixed media and pen and pencil sketching. Um, I have not tried painting in this sketchbook, however I did use markers and the markers worked very well in this sketchbook. I would recommend this for anyone looking for like a trusty hardcover sketchbook just for various dry medias. The next sketchbook is my trusty dusty Canson XL mixed media sketchbook. This sketchbook is great for wet and dry media. It has 98 pound paper so very nice uh, heavy paper. It has a spiral bound so that you can flip the pages over which I really like and overall this sketchbook just served me very well as I was going through art class and I would highly recommend it if you're on a budget and you just need a really good reliable sketchbook. I featured this sketchbook in my recent uh, reacting to my old art video. If you're interested in that and looking through all of the drawings in this sketchbook you can see that linked in the cards above. The next two sketchbooks are very similar. So I have two Strathmore mixed media sketchbooks. One of them is with regular paper and one of them is with toned gray paper. So I really like these sketchbooks. Uh, the toned gray sketchbook is actually what I used for my Inktober sketchbook this year. And so if you're interested in seeing a full flip through of that and hearing more of my in-depth thoughts on this sketchbook, I will leave that up in the cards above as well. And just generally, I think these are yet again, a really reliable sketchbook. The paper in the toned tan version is a thicker, heavier set paper, uh, which I really enjoyed. I think that if I were to buy this again, I would buy the toned tan before I would buy the regular paper version. Uh, but the regular paper version is, as you can see, a lot more flimsy, which some people love. And I know that a lot of people love doing their painting in this type of sketchbook. I personally have not done any paintings in this. Uh, I actually use this one more for songwriting now than I do even sketching. Uh, but I have done a couple of sketches in here. Let me try to find a couple of just like little doodles and sketches in this sketchbook. And I do think that it is a great option for anyone looking for something that has decent paper um, and just, you know, a quality cover that doesn't necessarily have to be hardcover. The paper lies pretty flat and this is a really nice option for a sketchbook. The next sketchbook I have here is the Aliza sketchbook that I got in my Aliza uh, unboxing. So I'm not going to go too far in depth for this because I'm not 100% sure how you can buy one of these. Uh, someone asked me in that video, which I will link again above in the cards, how I got this and it was actually through a Kickstarter campaign. So I'm not sure what the actual brand for the sketchbook is and how you would go about buying one. Um, I will just say that this is a nice sketchbook for, again, just pencil sketches and graphite work. It's not really for wet medias. So that's why it's in this section. and. Uh, while I really love it, I don't want to continue to dawdle on it too much because I'm not sure, again, how you as a consumer would get your hands on it. So it is part of my collection. I love it very much for my collection, but adding it to your own collection might be a little bit more difficult than some of the rest of the options that we have here. And finally, the last sketchbook in this category of sketchbooks as far as just general purpose, all serving sketchbooks is my Edger Lads Hot Press sketchbook. I use this sketchbook a ton. I've used it in several videos now and I, I just, I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> um, I've used it for several paintings, both gouache and watercolor, and it works so well for that. I also, in my most recent video, 
I did a bunch of different sketches in different types of mediums. So I did gouache, watercolor, colored pencil, and marker, and they all worked very well. I will say the sketch did bleed onto the back for the marker, um, but it didn't bleed through the paper, it just ghosted to the other side. This is a fantastic sketchbook for any and all types of art that you're doing. It is very smooth, again, hot press paper, and it is a dream to work in. I will absolutely buy another one of these, probably in a smaller size, albeit uh, when I finish this one because it is just great. Um, I say in a smaller size because I do prefer to work actually in a smaller size than this. This is good for more finished type work, which is why I have only painted so many pieces in this because I plan on doing more finished paintings in this sketchbook. But highly, highly, highly recommend. It is a great sketchbook and one of the staples of my sketchbook collection. Moving on now to watercolor sketchbooks. I have a wide variety of watercolor sketchbooks to share with you. Uh, I think that I will start with the one that I'm most excited to work in right now because I just got back from vacation. I use this Handbook & Co. Travelog sketchbook to log all of my like travels and vacations and so I'm very excited to do that after this last vacation I just went on. Uh, it has a really cool little strap here so it holds your sketchbook tight even if it gets really thick. It opens very flat and it handles water very well. I've done a lot of watercoloring in this sketchbook as it obviously it is a watercolor sketchbook uh, and it just, it handles it so well. I'm very impressed with this sketchbook. I've been able to layer pieces very well. And although the paper is quite thin, uh, it just, it holds up to whatever you throw at it. The next sketchbook I have here is my brand new, very, very exciting Hannah Mool sketchbook. Uh, it is a gorgeous watercolor sketchbook. The strap is very tight on this one. It is kind of the same concept as the Travelogue sketchbook uh, in that I believe it has the same paperweight and everything. However, the orientation of this one is more vertical, um, whereas that one was horizontal. So that's kind of the difference. But this one also has a different type of cover. Uh, it is kind of more of a textured cover in that uh, the, the top is less fabric and more like, I don't know if I'd even say vinyl. It's kind of like a plasticky material, uh, which I realize that vinyl is a bit plastic, but not, my, not the point. <laughs> um, basically, this is what I would consider to be kind of like the same option as the travelogue, just if you like the orientation different, uh, it performs about the same. Um, the paper in here was a little bit tougher to work with, um, and I did a video talking about this sketchbook because this is the one that Denise Soden painted this gorgeous picture in. Uh, so she has a far more in-depth review on this one than I do, but I also have a video talking about it if you're interested in more in-depth thoughts on this. As part of my collection, it is just like unmatchable, I guess, because Denise painted in it. So while I plan on using it for more uh, like sketches and concepts, like as a piece of my collection, it won't be going anywhere because it holds that original piece and just like the sentimental value of being something very special. Whereas the sketchbook itself, like if I were to just buy this from Amazon, um, you know, without having that painting in it, then I could really take or leave the sketchbook itself. <laughs> it's not why I bought it. Um, so that is kind of my opinions on it. Uh, the next two here are kind of the same thing. Like it's, it's kind of actually, if I hold all three of them up, you'll see they're kind of all about the same. <laughs> um, and I believe that Denise actually talked about all three of these in her video as well. So I will try to link that video of her reviewing these sketchbooks, um, down in the description. Um, I believe she actually also did review this one as well. So all four of these are kind of talked about in that video. Um, but I have here the Pentalic sketchbook, uh, the Pentalic Field Journal, I believe it's called, and then the Moleskine uh, Art Watercolor sketchbook. Both of these are basically the same, in my opinion. Uh, they, they, you know, the paintings in them are kind of all the same. Um, the paper quality is just about the same. The Pentelic one has a far more gritty paper, which I kind of prefer, uh, but as far as like being able to 
to paint in them. No real difference. Um, <laughs> I really like both of these sketchbooks. This is the size sketchbook that I prefer. So I think it's like eight and a half by five and a half. Uh, this size sketchbook works great. And these are solid options for watercolor sketchbooks if you're looking for easily traveled and just really quality watercolor sketchbooks. The next sketchbook I have is a little lower on what I would call like the quality scale, if you will, but I've really enjoyed working in this sketchbook. I've been working in this sketchbook for quite a while now. Uh, it is the Handbook Paper Co. Um, field Watercolor Journal. It is square in size and it has fluid watercolor paper in it. Uh, and it just, again, it has worked so well. I love, I love the binding of this. Like, <laughs> At, at the same time, like, I really like, <laughs> I really like how this can, like, lay flat like this, but at the same time, I love being able to just flip the page over as well. So I like having a lot of options in my sketchbooks, which is why my collection is so enormous. You do not by any means need this many sketchbooks. Like, I promise you, you don't. So... This sketchbook is just really nice. Uh, I've been really enjoying working on it. I am almost done, only this many more pages left. And then I will be doing a sketchbook tour video on this guy. And then kind of along the same veins as that, I have this more vertically oriented uh, sketchbook that is again, bound on the top here. This is kind of like the pentallic version of the Handbook Co. Uh, field sketchbook. I haven't done a ton of work in here. Um, I had kind of a concept in my head to do a Tremonti themed sketchbook, but I didn't really follow through with it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I wrote all of the concepts for all the pieces that I wanted to do and then never actually painted any of the pieces. So I might return to this sketchbook. I really like it. Uh, Pentelic again, has more gritty paper than I think a lot of other places, and I really like their paper. So if you're interested in more gritty watercolor paper, this is a great sketchbook option for that. And if you like having the binding here, uh, this is like the Pentelic version of that, whereas this is like the Handbook Journal Co. version of just like the wire-bound sketchbook for watercolors. And then finally here, I have this gem of a sketchbook. I have a, another video on this, uh, starting a new sketchbook, but this is my Sketchbook Shop Co. Uh, journal, watercolor journal. It is handmade. It is bound with uh, an old book. And so the binding is all done by hand using Fabriano watercolor paper. And so they hand bind it, they deco the edges, there's a ribbon to keep your place and also a strap to keep the sketchbook together. This again is like a staple of my collection. I love this sketchbook so much and I am so excited to have it in my possession. I haven't used it a ton yet because I again have like a theme for this sketchbook. So I did a video painting this piece and then I've done one more piece since then. Uh, and. I want to do different song illustrations in this sketchbook and so because it has a specific theme I don't reach for it for my everyday sketches as much but that doesn't mean I don't love it because I absolutely do and I think that this is just the perfect addition to anyone's sketchbook collection if you don't have a handmade sketchbook I highly recommend that you purchase one either from this company or from any of the amazing Etsy sellers that are out there trying to you know support them and just making sure that the art business as a whole stays alive through both the large corporations and also the independent sellers. So with that, you guys, I want to thank you for watching my sketchbook collection. I know it is a lot of sketchbooks. Please let me know if you want to know my in-depth thoughts about any of the other sketchbooks. Uh, I have videos linked for you in the cards pertaining to all of the sketchbooks that I have like a dedicated video for either in the form of a sketchbook tour or like a sketchbook unboxing that sort of thing but if there's any other ones on the list that you want me to go through like more of my thoughts on or if you want to just leave a comment asking about any of the sketchbooks that I've tried I would love to hear it I will 
talk to you guys next time. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you're interested. I post new art-related content every single Tuesday and occasionally on Fridays. Thank you guys so much. Bye!